Morning, everybody. Welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison, and today we'll be going over the markets, uh, just as usual, look at some news, look at some charts, and look at crypto bubbles as well. So I hope you had a good weekend. Um, let me know what you're up to in the comments uh, at the weekend. Over the weekend, what was I up to? Building bookshelves. Um, over the weekend, I got... Um, oh, by the way, that bird that I was talking about last week, it got out at the weekend. I managed to get out, I let out um, kind of the hole in the wall. So I had a vent in the wall and I kind of took the vent off um, and enticed the bird out with some kind of bread. It actually popped as we head out, came out. And when we came home on Saturday afternoon, I was at the window trying to get out. So it flew away. So everything's good with the bird. Um, what I'm just going to show you here something. I'm going to switch over cameras. I'm going to show you what I was up to the weekend. So this is what I was up to. Building bookshelves. So I got quoted about two and a half thousand pounds for bookshelves. And I'll just go back to this view. Yeah, I got quoted two and a half thousand pounds to build kind of bespoke bookshelves. Uh, and then when I was looking online, it wasn't the right sizes I wanted. And it was going to cost about 500 pounds for the bookshelves I wanted. So I thought, I'll bugger it, I'll just make them myself. And I did. And that, that was the result that you just seen. So that's what I've been doing over the weekend. Anyway, that's nothing to do with crypto. Just a wee insight into kind of things I get up to at the weekend. Um, so that was that. Okay, so I'm just going to see if we're live. That'll give us a good opportunity for people to jump in. See how many people are watching. We've got a few, few people in just now. Bank holiday here um, over in the UK as well. So don't expect a lot of UK people. Right, we've got a few people in. So I'm just going to jump over. And we have B is in the house. Welcome to you. Thanks for your message, mate. Uh, Doug Anton is in the house. Smart People is in. Crypto Don Juan. Good to see you, buddy. Um, Stephen King is in. Marcus Jafari. Mac Pawn. Kev T. A. Telstra is in. A Deb Finn. One of our brilliant admins is in. And um, it's a Deb and Rob and James that kind of provide uh, some of the news stories I'm kind of sharing with you today. So thanks very much again, A Deb. Really appreciate that, mate. Mervyn Skidmore. Niles Bill. Tim Gash is in. Dennis Van der Hayden. Crypto Don Juan, nice, the dog looks cosy. Uh, what's his, her name is Cara. Cara, so she is, I was just hearing the name there. Um, she's eight years old. Karen, she's a golden retriever. She's she's lovely, but she's mental. She is really mental. Um, High Points Drifter is in, Matthew Parks. Rendo Holland is in. Uh, B, I was lying there where your dog is all weekend, very lazy. Uh, it's good to get some days like that. I've never done that for ages. I'm always kind of doing up to, up to stuff. Um, a dead bin man of many talents I don't know about that the bookshelves are not perfect but it was me that made them and I can look at them and just say I saved myself two grand because they only cost about £90 so I went to a timber merchant uh, got the, the timber for it stained it all with my wife over the weekend got it all stained and then put them together so I'm quite chuffed anyway Black Label 46 is in the house welcome to you uh, as well. Okay, we're going to jump over to crypto bubbles. What's been happening over the last hour? You can see it's mostly red just now. LRC finally moving. Um, yeah, LRC is finally moving. Gene, I hope you're kind of looking at this as well. LRC is finally moving because I'd called um, LRC at 1100, I think, and it went down from there and probably stopped out um, a lot of people as well. But it's starting to move now as well. 3.2% over the last hour. XVG moving, 2.17%. PPT moving as well. Um, Aurora, Aeon is up. ABBC is up as well. Okay, let's look over the last 24 hours. Situation still the same, mostly red. Um, you can see there. LRC over the last 24 hours, 3.98%. Aurora, 4.75%. Zen, 4.41%. Called that as well. Eternity up 35 uh, Max Minecoin down 19.9% and Digix Dow is down 12.8% as well with a whole plethora of uh, or slew of others that are down as well. So at the moment, it doesn't look that brilliant, but a lot of the alts are coming up. So I'd kind of made a post of the weekend in the premium group as well that the calls have not been brilliant um, for the month of April. And it was to apologize for that because obviously I have to take responsibilities for the calls I make. People pay to be in the premium group, so I have to take responsibility for that. And nobody was calling me out or anything. Um, just just had to, I felt I had to kind of explain 
that when I, when we're in a market like this, when Bitcoin is kind of shooting up, we're used to Bitcoin going down and down and down and down. But when the markets kind of change, we have to change strategies slightly, ever so slightly. Um, so that's what I've been doing and I've made a few calls this morning again. They're already starting to move the calls. So we have to change strategies when the market changes um, as well. So we have to adapt. So change and adapt to the markets itself. So and I, I thank all the premium members. A big shout out to all the premium members. Really, really appreciate you because you just came back and just said um, we're kind of behind you. And it was just brilliant. It was brilliant to see and all the admins as well. Just um, doing fantastic. Um, but I felt I had to kind of do that at the weekend as well. Okay, so that's Crypto Bulls. We'll look at the markets overall, see what's happening. We'll just reload this. Um, I think we're down about a billion since it kind of came on. Well, not since it came on, no. It's gone back up. So we're at 179 billion um, for the overall market capitalization. Bitcoin dominance up slightly to 55.9%. Can I have to read that? 55.9% um, for Bitcoin dominance has gone up. 24 hours. Loopring is the highest mover at 4.37%. Horizon called that as well. Um, was one of them, so that's 4.24% still moving. Eternity, Populous, Aurora, Digibyte, Verge, Decentraland, not up that much. So it's only about 12% up and 88% down in the top 100. Digix Dow, 20%. Oh, sorry, 12%. Maximine Coin, 20%. Cosmos is down. That had a big, huge run up, so it's no surprise it's down. Project Pi, Name, Neo, Litecoin, Crypto.com. Uh, basic attention token all down uh, in the mid as well, 5%-ish or so. So it's a lot of red today in the markets. We'll just look at the overall markets. We are on coin market cap. We've got 2,149 cryptocurrencies listed now. So what is up on volume over $10,000 over the last 24 hours? Buck Hath coin is up 159% on 54000 Agrello Delta, we've seen that as well. Agrello, Agrello Delta, Agrello is up 67% um, on 14 million volume. I can't see any news at all. It was up about 90% at one point, but I can't see any news why it's up. I think it just took off and people started jumping on the bandwagon. So that is up 67% at the moment. Um, Blazer Coin is up 53% on 26,000 volume. Everex is starting to move. Well, it, did, it has moved. 35% on 6.5 million. Bitex Global is up 33% on 2.5 million volume. That's looking good. Postcoin is up 33% as well. Um, that's on 129,000 volume. Hmm. And that's one I hold just now, but if you look at the market cap, 25,000. So I don't know if it's a, a shit coin or not, but I kind of put some a couple hundred dollars into it um, way back just on the hopes that it might kind of someday kind of move. Um, I think that's it. We're going to look at Ether Inc. I've looked at that. I'm still, I've still not made up my mind about Ether Inc. I don't think it's uh, a gore. Kcash is up 23% on 8 million volume. It's only got a market cap of 9.692. So there's some hidden gems within these kind of numbers. There are some hidden gems within there and we're still kind of looking at them as well uh, within our group. Okay, who else is in the house? We have uh, Mervyn Skidmore saying, Lazy Dog, just taking on a Vizsla. Rehome, he's 10 but still full of roof and bounds. Cat is worried, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Donny Don Matthews, all good Steve, nothing to apologise about even if the calls didn't do its thing. We have these tokens in hand and when things move, we can always get the gains. Yeah, when things start to move, and they are starting to move for Bitcoin, not for the altcoins. Obviously, we're trading altcoins to get Bitcoins, but when they start to move, we, we are going to get a lot of gains um, from them. Um, we'll look at the small market caps. Um, one of the ones I was looking at, where was it? I was kind of looking. So the small caps, I was looking at Bab, obviously. Uh, 96 Gui. I'm um, looking at Digitex, see what Digitex is doing in BTC volume or value. 564, so still low just now um, for Digitex. Metamorph, um, Metamorph, where are they just now? 93, 
at the moment. I'm just going to go to the hourly, just make sure that's correct. Right, 93 at 7 o'clock. That should be updated for now at 8 o'clock. Because they released a tweet, and I'll just show you this in a sec. So it's not moved. I don't know what the price is yet, so we can look on METM. See if that's 93 is correct. 93 is. So they released a tweet. And I can't find the tweet. And it's for the version 2. So go to twitter.com forward slash metamorph. Oh, for goodness sake, man. That's the status. Metamorph Pro, just go to that. And so they released about version 2 coming out very soon. And they just released um, kind of an image of it. And then we can see the image here. And this is what it's going to look like. I have to say, Metamorph has got a brilliant interface. It doesn't completely work just now, but this is what version 2 is all about just now. Um, but I love the kind of uh, interface, the user interface, the UI has got um, just now. Uh, once it gets all up and running and it's moving and it's working as well, I think it's just going to be a beautiful exchange from a user interface point of view. Um, so the atomic swaps, obviously, we can do. We know about that. That's one of the big kind of plus points for it. But even just as an exchange, it looks really good. So the big thing for Metamorph is onboarding users. I think once they get more users um, and they've got liquidity in the market, they don't necessarily need liquidity because of the way it's built. But uh, I think it's going to be really, really good. And I'm looking forward to kind of version to being fully functional um, as well. So they're working on it in the background. Metamorph still only got a market capitalization of about 700,000. Uh, I'm not pushing it or anything. I have got it. Um, you know that anyway. But I just think it could be one of the big ones. And they're still worth 609,000 is a market cap. So even if it 100 exes, it still goes to 6 million. Uh, 60 million, sorry. Just for 100 x. So... Um, but is it feasible that as, if it did pick up and really onboarded users and it could go a thousand x to 600 million and even that is not huge by any manner of means but uh, I think 10x, 20x, 30x could well be possible for Metamorph by the end of the year but it's not just about that this is about um, kind of what they're doing they're working in the background with it as well they're doing version 2 coming out um, I really like Metamorph, it um, just keeps on plugging away, which is good. So I'm looking forward to kind of version 2 coming out. And um, what else are we looking at? There, we'll just go to so Metamorph. How do, how are they doing? How do? Down just now to 252 at the moment. I did go up to 460, down to 252, that's on the hourly. So not doing brilliant just now. But no worries about them. I think they're going to do it real well. Blockport, kind of coming back up at 1893. Vouch for me and SurePal. A lot of people don't know about them. 74, it's just some I'm watching. AdBank, I really like AdBank. Um, down, all-time low as well. 27 or nearest all-time low. BDG, I don't know how big degree they're doing. I need to check them out. But 33, Satoshi. And so Phantasma is all time low as well, 657 now. So that's a few of the small caps as well we're looking at. Um, some news for this week coming out on CoinMarketCal. This is CoinMarketCalendar, if you haven't checked that out, or check that out as well. Iotex coming out with a mainnet update. Nebulous is um, upgrading. This is from today as well for Nebulous. Eternity token migration phase ends. On-chain vote starts tomorrow for Eternity. YouTube campaign, campaign for Iotex. Um, it's not really a campaign as such as them talking about or giving you updates on it. Loopring, token contract upgrade on the 8th of May. Block Jarta, um, blockchain conference for A-Chain. Uh, hologram mobile app for Vibe on the 10th of May. Soul Meetup for Engine Coin. Pundi X are going to have a coin burn, 7.5 billion for NPXS. 
for NPXSS, SS XEM burn is going to be 6.9 billion. And general event for crypto, New York Block Plus Summit on the 11th of May. So that's all happening this week. That's for Binance tokens, not kind of everything. So that's just for Binance. We kind of trade on Binance. That's what we're using to make the calls in the premium group um, as well. But obviously there's other brilliant exchanges out there you can get. A lot of good coins, especially hidden gems like KuCoin, IDEX are good for them as well. And Mercatox is good for hidden gems as well. Okay, we'll jump back to chat. Um, G Slick is in house, welcome to you. Uh, Donny Don, from a trading perspective, not too, not too sure on long term with this project. ABBC is pretty interesting, a trading possibility for even amateurs, as a trade is a non brainer with the constant ups and downs. It's looking that way. If you look at ABBC, um, I wouldn't necessarily get into it um, for the long term, but ABBC does look brilliant from a trading point of view, and we often see it uh, in the kind of bubbles, the crypto bubbles, kind of up 20%, down 20%. So from a trading point of view, it does look brilliant. You're right um, there, Donny Don. Black Label. No, that was, sorry, that was Black Label, was it? No, it wasn't. It was Donny Don Matthew, right? Black Label 46. Not sure if you have noticed, but if you click on the crypto bubbles, it will now show a chart as well. Ah, All right, so I don't see the chart. I, I knew all this was here. I wonder if it's... Um, so you mean a chart chart as opposed to a chart. Oh, there it is. Excellent. Lovely job, we. No, that's quite cool. I love crypto bubbles, I have to admit. Uh, since I discovered it, I just think it's brilliant. Just for a, a quick snapshot of where where the market is, I think it's brilliant. And no doubt um, they'll kind of develop this. And they should, and they're starting to add wee things like the charts as well, that's excellent. Love that, thanks for that. And Black Label. And B, I think I'll set my coins, nothing out there worth a gamble today. There's a few things I've called today, I don't know. There's a few things I've called today, so I've got a um, coin of the day as well coming up. Uh, Sean Dubbs is in house. Morning, Stephen Crew. Andreas is in. Good morning to you. Just like CV. Not checked out for a while. I will do. Hidden gems on Buy Box. I've never really traded on Buy Box, but I know there are other exchanges out there that are good for trading. Uh, more Pundi delivered today, G Slick. I thought I'd lost my Pundi last week as well um, for the community coin because we've got about half a million Pundi eggs, which is not much, but it was a lot when we kind of first got into them. Um, and dollar wise, it was quite a bit. I think it was about $3,000 worth at least. Um, but <laughs> it's not worth it anywhere near that now. But I managed to find them okay. Um, or find the key for it okay. It's been such a long time since I put it in there. Okay, what else have we got? And um, we'll just look at the charts. That was loop ring. Loop ring just kind of went up to 1046. Just crossing over on the hourly. And this is a problem. I was kind of talking about this this morning as well in the premium group to a few people. Um, so this is the issue with a lot of the alts at the moment. So we'll just go to... If we go to here. So DLT, for example, if we look at this. So we normally trade on the daily chart. Now if we look at DLT, that's not even crossed over on the daily. On the four hourly just crossed over around about 14.45 before it went up to 2.364. So you'd have missed a lot, you'd uh, missed a lot of the kind of rising of DLT. And it just came out of the blue as well. But a lot of the problems are going to occur when I'm trying to make the calls is that they're not even crossed over. They're not even um, kind of the strategy I use. None of them have really crossed over yet, uh, but they're, they're going up 10, 20, 30, 40%. And that's on the four hour as well. Normally it's on the daily. So hardly anything is um, kind of crossed over. Uh, so that's going to be the issue. So we're going to have to move to a different time frame for making a call. So, that's, um, so this is part of the change and adapt to the market um, as well. But just sm small changes like that, just changing the time frame. To make the calls as well is going to be good, I think. Okay, so look at Bitcoin. What's happening with Bitcoin just now? 
and where can we expect it to go? So this is bit stamp 5,593. It's actually coming down just now. So what's going to happen, unless Bitcoin just um, kind of the arse falls out of Bitcoin and it just kind of shoots down below 5,000 um, or something like that, then the alts should start, you should start to see the alts jumping as well as Bitcoin stabilizes round about this level um, before moving up slowly. That We want a slow move up for Bitcoin. Not in big jumps. When it jumps up big, the alts come down because people sell up the alts to get into Bitcoin. When it's a slow rise, then um, you're going to get more of the alts kind of rising as well, like we see with DLT, uh, Everex as well, and Mithril coming up, Ethos is coming up as well, Zero AX is coming up. So you're going to start to see a lot of these jumping as well. And this is where we're going to see the opportunities to get more Bitcoin. But we just have to still keep an eye on Bitcoin to make sure it's stabilized and not kind of dropping off the face of the planet here. So this is on the daily. We're still, if you look at the daily, the daily still looks really good. It's only a couple of red candles there. Hopefully we get a bounce off the 7 EMA. If not, um, a bounce off the kind of 50 EMA, round about the 5,000 level. If it goes below that, then it's not looking good. But I don't think there's a big, huge kind of worry just now. So over the last few days, we've gone down. What is that? I'll just kind of take a look. About 3% um, over the last few days, it's gone down. So no need for panic or anything just now, but we just still have to keep an eye on Bitcoin as well, obviously. DLT, we're looking at that. Obviously, that just came out of the blue. Just came out of nowhere. Uh, when did it start? We'll go look on the hourly. Kind of started around about five o'clock yesterday. No kind of warning signs or anything. And no news that I could find anywhere. I couldn't find any news as to why it was going up. Everex, I think that went up purely because it's hit its kind of bottom. If we see, if we look on the daily for the big picture, so from the macro point of view. So it kind of jumped up. We've seen that from 7,000 all the way up to 41,000. So nearly 400% kind of went up. Then it came back down and it's kind of hit this. Look at the Fib retracement. And hit this 88% level just below it. So I think this is a bounce from here. I think that's what it is because it kind of retraced so much. I think it's a bounce from there. And it's a good bounce as well for Everex and it could keep going up just now. Mithril, we can see there again on the Fib retracement, it kind of went 100% retraced. Big time. Uh, I think it's hit its bottom now. If you look here for Mithril, near its all time low. So it nearly hit a kind of a, a, in the double bottom there at 286 and bouncing back up. So it could go, it could go up another 100, 200% over the next couple of months for Mithril. Um, Ethos, not really doing much. This is where we kind of looked at way before. So that's coming off its all-time low as well. So a lot of these coins are going back to their all-time lows or even lower as well. Zero AX, I had a big run-up as well. Same with Eternity, that kind of broke down. That was symmetrical. That's the Populous. Populous all-time low bouncing off. So there's going to be a lot of good opportunities here but April was a pretty crap month to be honest uh, I'm just going to look at the CYT calls for April the average gain in April officially um, I think we've ended now no it's not quite ended we've still got um, a few calls in play at the moment um, officially it was 9.02 percent gains and um, so it's probably the worst month for a while that I've had, but 9.02% is not that bad. And this is assuming that you don't put a stop loss on and you just um, you run with the trade and go to the highest point and you get out then. So you're never going to get like 
dead on 40% for BNB, for example, when I called it 342, went up to 481. So you're never going to get into the bottom and get out at the top, but this is assuming that you did as well. We have to, that's what the numbers are based on. I have to kind of be honest and tell you that. But 9.02% as opposed to March, 27% or 28%. 20% for February and January was 16%. So April has been the worst month so far. I think that's it um, for the charts. I'll just jump back to the chat. David Schwartz is in the house. Welcome to you. Good to see you, buddy. MB was looking at NCASH long term, just over £1,400 for £1 million. Comments, welcome. NCASH, it keeps on going down. We looked at that a few times for NCASH, but it just keeps on going down. Same with Pundi X as well. I don't know what's going on with Pundi X. But NCASH, if we can see it here, at 32, we think, okay, we've hit the bottom here. It looks as if it's going to bounce. I thought the bottom was about 43-ish. I thought it was about 45. I thought that was the bottom. Kind of went down from there. I thought 42 was the bottom. Then we thought kind of 37 was the bottom. And now it's looking like 32 is the bottom. Is it? Is it though? Can you can you say that's the bottom? Um, I've never. I don't know the news about NCash just now. I don't know if there's any news, the fundamentals of it, because I've never looked into it for a while. Uh, I know they had problems, obviously, a couple of months ago. Um, but it's not really done much at all on the daily. I don't think it's crossed over. Yeah, that's not crossed over. So really, it's. 10 times, about 15 times of its all time high. Just now crossed over there at 47 to go up to 54, then came back down. And kind of false break out there. So you'd think, looking at this, you'd think, okay, well, surely it's hit its bottom, but we can't think like that. There's no way you can think. As a trader, the bottom is never where you think the bottom is. It could go lower than you think it is. Uh, and I've done the same, I've made the same mistake as a trader. I've made the same mistake um, with Seller. If we look at Seller, Seller BTC, and what's that doing now? 159, so it's gone back up slightly. So if we look at it on the four hourly, so I thought around about here, 325, I thought, okay, that's the bottom. In fact, I thought 500 was the bottom. If we looked at it on the hourly, I thought 500 was the bottom. I called it around about 500, the 5% stop loss. And this is one of the ones that I did get wrong big time, I have to admit. I wasn't even there, it was up here, around about 500. So I thought, okay, we've hit the bottom here. And because it kept on coming down after it was released, down to 474, started moving back up. Thought, okay, that's it, starting to rise, but then it came back down. I thought, okay, at 365, I think it was. I thought, okay, this is the bottom, it's kind of stabilized, it's starting to move back up, came back down. Then here, I didn't get back in. I thought 200, it must be the bottom. Nope, kept on coming down. 148, it got down to, um, before bouncing back up. Is this the bottom? We don't know. You don't know. So that's um, just let the trade come to you, though as well instead of trying to anticipate the bottom. So in cash, you'd look at that and just go, nope, it's not a buy at the moment, not even on a one hourly. It's not a buy on a four hourly. It's not a buy, there's no confirmation. On the daily, definitely not a buy either. So it could go lower than this. So that would be my thoughts on it. It's still not a buy at the moment, but a lot of these are looking really interesting. Hot, uh, I called that the other day as well, I think. And that's, again, that's not hit the bottom yet. I thought 23, strong support there at 23, 24. Still not, it's just gone down again. Dent as well, going down there, all-time low. And you think, okay, it's kind of double bounced off here. This is on the daily. Is it one, two, three, four, five times it's had 12 Satoshi? You think it's going to bounce, but you just don't know again. And Pundi X down to 10. I think that's its all-time low, literally. It is. So 10 Satoshi, unbelievable. So yeah, it's a di very difficult market to call, so you have to wait on the confirmations now. I think that's the main thing to kind of look out for. 
And Donny Don Matthew, a PPL, we're not using Syndicator. People who are not using Syndicator apps should use it. Predictions for both crypto and traditional market will get you CND tokens every month. It's also informative to keep track. I've done that for, I can't remember when it was. It must have been about five, five, five months ago, six months ago. I was kind of playing the game. So it's like a game. You can you kind of predict, like ask you questions about the crypto market and you kind of say, yep, and you put certain percentage points on it and you can get CND cryptos. Um, I played it for a while and then it's just I just kind of stopped using it. But I do like it actually. It was becoming quite addictive. But yeah, I really do like it, Donny Don. Geez, like always when Bitcoin pumps, they always follow and feeling alt pump today, tomorrow. I thought when I was looking at the markets this morning and things were starting to move up, I thought, okay, it's going to be a really green day today. So we'll need to wait and see. I think over the next couple of days, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, Populous used to be $100 down to $1. Ouch, yeah, I know, 99% drop. Tailcoin, uh, I think you mentioned that before. I haven't kind of looked at it. Twenty-one million. That's the fundamentals of it. The basic kind of fundamentals. Thirty-six percent of its total supply in there. Okay, so we will look at the news um, just now. And as I said, this is from a Deb. Uh, it's not this I was looking at. Hang on a second. Uh, this is from Adeb and Rob and James. And can I put some of the news in as well? So I appreciate that. Thank you very much again. Um, Bitfinex gets axed from BTC price on CoinMarketCap. That was it. I was going to say that's not um, what I was looking at. So this is about Bitfinex getting axed from the BT price exclusion. Um, so on coin market cap, obviously they've got an aggregated price for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Bitfinex has been axed from it as well. So while Bitfinex is still listed on coin market cap, his BTC price shows an asterisk denoting exclusion. Bitcoin is trading for six to six thousand fifty on Bitfinex compared to CMC's aggregate price of five thousand seven hundred sixty-eight at time of writing. So it looks like with the likes of Bip and Eggs, if you're too high or too low, obviously you're outliers. So I think um, they've taken the average price of Bitcoin and coin market cap from all the exchanges, but they're excluding the outliers. I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest, but it is, it is kind of excluding kind of Bip and Eggs, um, from it as well. Uh, a detailed report from the NYAG's office, NYAG's office alleges that iPhone X Inc., which operates both in Bitfinex and Tether, has engaged in a series of fraudulent activities, resulting in a multi-million dollar cover-up involving customers' funds. Bitfinex headquartered in Hong Kong and registered in British Virgin Islands, a leading cryptocurrency exchange in Tether, uh, is the world's leading stablecoin used by crypto traders to escape market volatility. So we know all that, and it looks it kind of does look bad for Bitfinex, but I don't think it's a big. Uh, I don't think they've done it because of all the allegations and stuff like that. I think it's just because it's an outlier. Uh, things going on there, definitely. But another piece of news for kind of Bitfinex, um, we've just kind of seen this. Enyag requests that Bitfinex be forced to release tethered deal documents. So the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, requested disclosure of um, documents concerning an alleged deal made between cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex and stablecoin operator Tether. The Enyag's Memorandum of Law was filed on May the 3rd. So still looking into that, obviously there's a bit of kind of concern about Bitfinex. Personally, I think it's going to be okay. And this was other ones as well. Beware of the fake Bitfinex and white papers appearing online. So a speculation and patient arises over the upcoming Bitfinex token sale. A lot of people are not talking about this. Opportunistic fakers are creating bogus white papers that purport to describe the details of the upcoming sale. Why? To scam potential buyers out of the cash. So you have to be careful about this. Um, Bitfinex have not got white paper out yet. So don't trust anything that says they have just now. This is kind of what it looks like. And this is on Scribed. Okay, it shows you the details about it. So it's not even a brilliant kind of piece of writing or uh, not that it's a piece of writing, it's not a brilliant put together document. So you'd expect something much more professional um, than that from the likes of Bitfinex. So just be careful, 
out there if um, you're seeing kind of Bitfinex white papers kind of stuff and you're thinking about investing in it. Other news, I thought this was interesting. Canada awards 300 megawatt block to lure Bitcoin miners. So Canada's largest power company, Hydro-Quebec, has now announced it will set aside a dedicated 300 megawatt block of electricity specifically for the use of Bitcoin mining activities. This now brings a total power allocation to the blockchain sector in the region of 668 megawatts. So according to the announcement, the new allocation will allow us to accommodate these new customers without negatively impacting our power budget. We will be able to protect the low rates offered to our customers. So Canada offers the lowest rates at 10 cents per kilowatt per hour, um, which is already less than 25% of the cost in other states such as New York and Boston, which is good. So they're attracting, hopefully attracting people. And the decision of Quebec Energy Board is a major victory for Bitcoin miners in Quebec, but also for Bitcoin in general. It's a clear demonstration that Bitcoin related businesses are operating within the scope of the law of the land. So good news for Bitcoin miners over in Canada. And this is the other kind of same story, talking about Canada awards 300 megawatt block of electricity to attract Bitcoin miners. And this is what a lot of countries I think should be doing to attract the cryptocurrency space or to attract more cryptocurrency people over to there and become a Bitcoin kind of state almost. <clears throat> Not just in America, but a Bitcoin country, a Bitcoin haven, if you will. I think they'll reap the, the benefits of that later on, but a lot of countries are not, they don't even know about Bitcoin, to be honest. Right, this was interesting. Now, I, I, sometimes you look at the news and you get pissed off with the kind of hypocrisy that's in the news as well. So I want to show you a story here. This is from CCN.com. So it says, only an idiot would use Facebook shady cryptocurrency. Um, so by CCN.com, in its never-ending conquest to take over the world, Facebook is building a network of online merchants and financial institutions to support a secretive new cryptocurrency. The Wall Street um, Journal reports that Mark Zuckerberg War Machine is looking for $1 billion to fund a secretive stablecoin project, Project Libra, and is talking with heavyweights like Visa and MasterCard to get the cash. Um, so it's just saying Facebook wants $1 billion to fund Project Libra. The company started Project Lib Libra over a year ago as a simple way to transfer money between WhatsApp users, but in true Facebook fashion, it's grown far beyond that original scope. And he goes on to talk about this um, kind of Facebook, how it's, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't invest in it. Facebook is kind of the devil, and it's talking about that as well. Facebook censorship is talking about the people that are censored. Uh, it says Facebook should, crypto should be dead on arrival. Facebook cryptocurrency comes with all the downsides of the company behind it and none of the benefits of an actual cryptocurrency. Anyone hyping it up as a step toward mass adoption simply doesn't understand what makes crypto great. If you're looking for a currency with poor security and oppressive censorship, give your money to Facebook. If not, stay far, far away. And this is from Stephen Buckel um, from CCN.com. But this is Stephen Buckel's Facebook page. And he's just kind of posted on the third domain. This is in public domain, so there's no... Um, there's no worries about kind of sharing this, but this is a Facebook page. So he decries Facebook on the one hand, and then he's got a Facebook kind of page of his own. He's got a Facebook profile of his own and actively using it. And talking about CoinClay here in April, and talking about spots are running low, hurry up and sign up today for CoinClear. Actively using Facebook, decrying it in this article here. Is there ulterior motives to that? We have to look even at the cryptocurrency, well, especially cryptocurrency news like this in this kind of day and age. And it's just about the hypocrisy behind that. And that's why I thought I would highlight that. Um, and this is going on all the time, all over the place as well. So you just make up your own mind, do your own research as well when you're researching coins. I'm big into Facebook. I am. I do like Facebook. And um, there are downsides, but there are a lot of benefits to Facebook as well. It's how I built my business. And I'm still building my business as well. So... It was just, it's just the hypocrisy behind a lot of these kind of stories as well. So just be careful and do your own research here as well. Um, Ripple adds SBI president to its board of directors. So blockchain um, payment startup Ripple has added a new director to its board, Yoshitika Kato, who is currently president, representative director and CEO of Japanese financial giant SBI Holdings. Ripple announced the news last week saying that Kato 
uh, will be replacing the CEO of SBI Ripple Asia, Takashi Okita. Um, so new board of the day or new um, director on the board of directors there from SBI. So closer ties with SBI as well. Um, other news, kind of looking at Ethereum 2.0's nodes need to talk. A solution is Hobbits. Uh, I'll post these news stories for you as well. Uh, I'll just give you the highlights. Bitcoin's lightning comes to Apple smartwatches with new app. This is just the kind of headlines I'm giving you here. Twitter and Google Trends interest precedes cryptocurrency price study finds. So this is about the importance of kind of sentiment in the market and what people are searching for on Google and Twitter, etc. And obviously, a lot of people are searching um, cryptocurrencies and what they're kind of all about. Um, Metamorph, I've kind of showed you that before as well. They showed you the kind of trading for version 2. Uh, cryptocurrency on Reddit. Non-Euro-based country Wirex users beware. So this is talking about um, kind of Wirex users outside of the European Union or Europe um, because of the higher charges. And this is just one Reddit users kind of uh, look at, but it's worth checking into. Uh, broad rise in stocks, bonds. Thank you, WS. Very cool. Uh, it says broad rise in stocks, bonds and commodities worries some investors. So Bitcoin up over 50%. It's just put out at the top. So this is from WSG, uh, Wall Street Journal, obviously. And it gets people thinking about Bitcoin, seeing it's up 50%, going, whoa, what's, what's this Bitcoin all about? And they're going to look into it more. As weird as that sounds today, that people are still asking, what is Bitcoin? Because we're so embroiled in this kind of world, uh, it's, it's weird for us to think people are still going to be asking, what is Bitcoin? But there's millions of people around the world asking that very question. Uh, another one, infamous uh, BitConnect promoter claims victimhood, says it wasn't his first scam that he was involved in. Um, so... This is uh, kind of about Carlos Matos as well. I'm not going to it, but I'll post a kind of news story for you as well. Just saying he was a victim, um, basically. So that's the news as well. I'm just going to jump back one second. Have a wee look at something. One second. Where are we? Right, okay, we're just making sure that we're on something. We are. That's all good. Um, okay, just jump back to the chat. B, cheers for that, Steve. Could end up chasing my tail with the NCash. Yes, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to catch um, the, the falling knife, so to speak. Uh, and I've done it myself in the past. I've done it with kind of seller, as I kind of showed you. Um, I just thought it was a bomb and trying to call the bomb. But wait for confirmations I think that's the best thing to do instead of saying okay we've got strong support here and um, uh, and kind of thinking it's going to bounce from there and if it goes down then we still keep our, our hand in it but as, as wise not to and I'm, I've been out of selling now um, for a while but I did kind of dip back in I thought it's going back down again it did dip, I think I've gone at 175 and out again very close when I went below that but hopefully it is going to, I think sale is a good kind of project, uh, a layer two project. I think it's going to do well. Gino Dow, hello Stephen, everyone. Smash the like, says Gino. Thank you very much. Gene, like one crushed. What did I miss? It's talking about you earlier, Gene, talking about loop ring. I'm um, just saying I hope it goes up uh, for you as well. And Don and Joe Matthew, Steve, do you think using the RSI by a noob trader is a good indicator to buy and sell? People new in trading ask me this and they are not sure with other indicators and RSI is the easiest they can understand. RSI, um, you, you can use it. I wouldn't use it as an indicator in and of itself. I'd use it alongside other indicators they're using, just to, again, just for more confirmation. I'm of the opinion that the the kind of the simplest way is the best way, and that's why I kind of use kind of crossover. Look at the volume as well. Look at a couple of other indicators, but just using that alone, I still think you can use a crossover just on that alone and it served me well in the past it served me well just now um you just have to kind of tweak it slightly when kind of the markets change but yeah you could use the rsi but i wouldn't use it uh, on its own and um, b i don't use any facebook twitter etc but i think there's money in facebook coin i'm in exactly this is all about making money if we're being honest it's about business and business is about making money if you can do it ethically 
Brilliant. I'm saying if you can do it ethically, but make sure you do it ethically and you can sleep better at night. BTT order books look good. We'll just have a wee look at Binance. See what's happening with Binance. DLT up 70%. EverX we've just been talking about up 35% um, just now. And BTT, you're looking at the order books. Yeah, so we've got two to one um, in favour of a buys. So nearly four billion to buy at 10 Satoshi, 1.7 billion to sell at 11 Satoshi. So if you could buy at 10 and actually sell at 11 as well, that's you've got 10% profit. And I'd, I'd take a trade like that all day, every day, if I could. But it's actually getting in. So right now, would you get in it? Would you get to buy a ten satoshi? Probably not. You'd have to put your buy order in here. It would go to the towards the end of the order book, and then the same thing happens when you go to sell. Would you be able to sell at eleven satoshi? So it's not as easy as it seems when you just kind of look at it here. Um, but you could, you could do it. You know, take a couple of days to kind of pull it off as well. But the order books do look, do look good. And um, we'll go to seven decimal places. So when we look at from this point of view, this is from 10 Satoshi up to 19 Satoshi. And you've got to buy 388 Bitcoin worth. Now from 20 Satoshi to, to 29 Satoshi, you've got to sell 1,081 Bitcoin worth. And to sell at 30, from 30 to 39, you've got 1.0, uh, you've got 1,370 Bitcoin worth to sell at that price. So looking at it from that point of view, it doesn't look as good for BTT. So make sure you check that. So you've got eight decimal places normally, um, and Binance doesn't always have eight decimal places in all the tokens, but BTT it does. So look at the seven decimal places one. And if you go higher up, for example, Cardano. So this is on eight decimal places. If you look, you need to go back to it and go to seven decimal places. But you can also go to six decimal places as well and just see what it looks like from that point of view. It gives you a different kind of perspective on things. Uh, looking forward um, to a couple of Satoshis further on. So for so 1100 up to 1199 for Cardano, you've got 45 Bitcoin worth to buy. To sell from 1200 to 1299, you've got 39 Bitcoin worth. So looking at this, it looks as if you could kind of easily get over that and get over the 1200 up to going up to 1300 and then over 1300 and the other ones are hidden at the moment. And you'll get, obviously the order books change, they don't tell you a lot, but they can give you some indications of where people's uh, mindset is at the moment. Cryptodon Wan, see what do you think BTC is going to go to six and a half thousand or four thousand first? I'm on the team four thousand as of now. <sighs> Good question. Uh, we'll have a wee look. For me personally, it just depends on where it goes from here. So if it kind of goes down further, we've kind of come back down. Obviously, it's gone up quite a lot. So it's gone up as high as 5,850. We expect a small pullback. So if it can bounce off the 70 EMA here, which is looking to do, it did get to 5,560, bounced off there slightly, and we're at 5,600 again. I'm of the opinion it's going to go to 6,500. Well, 6,000. I don't know if we'll get to 6,500, but I think it will reach over 6,000 and kind of about this level, 6,300, 6,200. If it goes through 6,200, then I think 6,500 is just blown out of the water because that would be a buy, an indicator for a buy for a lot of people if it goes through that 6,200. So a lot more people will get in. So 6,500, I think, will be first before we get to 4,000. Again, do we get to 4,000 if we just do... 4,000 is run about here, the 4,000 mark. Um, so for me personally, I think it's going to 6,000 first, but we're at a critical point here. We're always at a critical point, to be honest, with Bitcoin, but 
we're at a critical point here. It needs to hold kind of round about this level, bounce off the 70 EMA and keep going higher. And I think we're going to get to that 6,000 hopefully this week sometime. But we really have to keep an eye on it going below 70 EMA. We don't want it to go below 5,000. If it does, then you're going to see 4,000. I think you might see 4,000. But not, I'm optimistic that it's going to go up to the 6,000 level. Have been for a while. And 6,200 level as well. So yeah, if I'm if I was kind of pushed to say, I would I would say going to six and a half thousand first before it goes to four thousand. Mervyn Skidmore using RSI EMA cross with MACD on the bot made a few mistakes, but overall works better on a plus or minus three percent Bitcoin price. Yeah, that's uh, from Mervyn Skidmore. It, it all depends. Everything depends on the BTC price, and the quicker we get away and decouple. Although I don't know what would happen with Bitcoin if we did decouple completely. Um, the quicker we get away from that, the better, I think. Be a good question, Crypto Don Juan. I'm going for four before the bull run also. Yeah, I don't know. Nah. I'm not convinced. I mean, I know I've been saying for months. I've been saying for months and months and months. Okay, so when we were here, so people were talking about here and saying, okay, we've got one more drop before we go back up. And then this was around about the six and a half thousand dollar level. Um, kind of back October, November, December time. So, okay, one more drop and then it's going to go to, um, it's going to shoot to the moon again. We had that drop back down to 3,200, nearly 50% of Bitcoin. And people were still saying around about here, we're still going to go down further. We're going to get this drop. I'm saying 50% drop is a huge, huge drop. That could be the drop that everybody was talking about. Um, and then because we're going back up again, people are still talking about this one more drop. I'm not kind of criticizing anybody, but I'm just thinking, I'm wondering why that one more drop before we go up. So we've had that one more drop potentially before we go back up. So we could shoot to the moon from here very slowly or very, very quickly. We have to be careful of that, obviously. So I don't know why the one more drop. Everybody's obsessed with this one more drop before we go back up. Because we've had the one more drop around about here. Could that have been the one more drop that everybody was thinking about? And I have to admit, a couple of months ago I said it as well, but I thought, okay, 3,200, that was the one more drop. That's it. That's all over. That was the bottom. Um, to me, 3,200 was the bottom. And I still think we're going to go higher from here. But that's my opinion. That's just one person's opinion. Um, Tony P is in the house. Morning, guys. I remember 5,800 was a level. I didn't think it would go on. It would go under in 2018. Yeah. Mervyn Skidmore, aid a buy order in 11.01. Is it going that low? And will Shelly do anything to the price? I think so. Eventually, Shelly will do something to the price. People, obviously, you're going to want to kind of get more Cardano. Cardano for the future. It's just brilliant for me. I think it's going to be an excellent buy. Um for the future and just collecting this and just accumulating at these prices, accumulating XRP, accumulating ADA and just trading for Bitcoin, ADA, XRP and a few others. Bernard Ronald is in the house. Welcome to you. Good to see you here, buddy. Okay, let's do the coin of the day. I know we're kind of at the end of it, but the coin of the day, I'm going to look at just now when we second, just jump back over. Where is it? Get the chart before it comes up. Right here. Oh, yep, here we are here. So the coin of the day is Vibrate. So it's a Vib BTC. Don't get mixed up with Vibe. So it's Vibrate. I was kind of talking about this this morning. I called it this morning already in the premium group. I called it lower than this price just now. Um, so it's coming out of this symmetrical triangle. It looks as if it's going to break out here. That's been used for support up here. Um, we've got this descending kind of line here as well. And if it breaks out of that, we could, we could potentially get. I'll just kind of see, show you that here. A spike. If it happens today, we could get a spike up to one thousand nine, which is not a huge deal, but it's still 30 40 percent. If it happens tomorrow, around about the same. And just going down that slope. So it just depends where it breaks out. So it looks as if it wants to break out. Um, might break out today, might break out over the next couple of days. 
But that's the coin of the day vibrate. I think that's going to kind of break out soon. From here, I've already called it a low price in the premium group as well. And we could potentially go up and spike up to 1500, which would be 100%. But the resistance line is round about here at the 997. So from here, yeah, I'll just measure it. Could potentially get 32% just to get up to the resistance. And it might be a slight pullback then before it goes back up again. But from a charting point of view, it looks as if Vibrate is going to kind of jump. And where are we with Vib just now in Binance? Vib. 7.99% um, with Vib. So this could bounce quite heavily or jump up quite heavily and get up to the thousand kind of Satoshi level. Yep, that would be its resistance, I would say. Okay, next resistance for it. So that could be the next big kind of jumper. I've called it already, as I said, I think we're up about three or four percent since I called it a couple of hours ago in the premium group. So it looks good. It's looking good for me. So that is the coin of the day today. Uh, we'll, we'll, I think we'll do it, call it, uh, make it the coin of the day instead of call of the day. So coin of the day is Vibrate. And that could be the next big jumper on Binance. Just kind of watch this space. So over the next 10 days, so we'll call that for 10 days. Put your 5% stop loss in, obviously. Um, and that's it. That was it. And we'll just end it on the call, the coin of the day. And we'll just go back to BTC, see what's happening. USD, 5,614. So it's going back up again. Looking to reach its yearly high. So its yearly high so far is 5,846. Are we going to beat that? Yes, I think we are. In my opinion, I think we are. And coin of the day is vibrate. And on that note, I'll leave it there and bid you a fair day, a good day today. And whatever you're doing, just be careful in the markets as well. Keep an eye on the Bitcoin price. And I'll see you next time. Until then, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.